probably gonna end up upsetting somebody and their mama but it's okay come for me i live for the drama actually i'm just kidding i'd probably start crying because somebody that looks at me funny <laughs> i'm mrs teal hello friends and book babes welcome back to the channel today we are doing a may wrap up video now i don't know about you but i feel like i've lived five lives for the amount of time it's taken to be done with may i don't know about you i don't know how you was living in may but for me it took a very long time to get out of this month. To start off this month, I read Love in Other Words. This is a very, very popular book. If you haven't seen it before, um, you probably live under a rock. I don't know. Tell Patrick Star said what's up. So I read this book during the beginning of the month, which was finals week, and I was moving out of my college apartment to come back home for the summer and I had to have all of my stuff in a car while going to San Antonio for a wedding and then going back home and actually having my crap out of my car. Um, so the first half of this month was kind of stressful, not gonna lie. It did take me the entire two weeks I had it on Libby to finish it, um, but I say it's more because of everything that was going on and a little bit to do with it wasn't much of a page turner for me to be honest with you um i gave i gave this book three stars i know i know i'm about to offend so many of y'all so many of y'all grandmas are gonna be coming for me but listen <laughs> so love in other words is a second chance romance uh friends to lovers to strangers to lovers again type of scenario if you don't know and it has a dual timeline type of situation going on where we see how they were when they first had met and we also get to see how they are now as adults after they haven't seen each other for 11 years and so you get to figure out what it was that like made them separate for so long um and so the reason i gave this book three stars so first of all <laughs> now with popular books i'm usually very skeptical because half the time you cannot be trusting book talk they be lying they be lying out here right uh, but for this one i actually thought i would love it um simply because literally everyone on booktube book talk everyone that has ever read this book not only loved it but always gave it five stars said it was their favorite romance book ever all the things right and so i thought that maybe i'd actually like this one and i think i liked it for about the first 70 percent of it to be honest with you i really did enjoy it i think the writing was pretty easy to follow, um, the story was very interesting, fig trying to figure out um, what it was that strained them. Also their little love story when they were teenagers was very cute, but the reason I didn't enjoy it that much was it wasn't that much of a page turner, which is another reason it took me two weeks to read, not just because of all the things happening in my life, because my finals week lasted a day, so if I wanted to, I could have read before having to move out, but I didn't. My main issue with the book was the reveal as to why they hadn't spoken in 11 years. I think it was just done very poorly. Um, I won't give away what it was, but I feel like the writers didn't do a good job handling the situation that they presented as the reason for why they haven't spoken in so long um it it was very much if the roles were reversed we would be like oh my gosh you are traumatized that was a trauma that happened to you like did you ever get help with that like what happened with that and you know all those things but the writers honestly try to gaslight us into thinking that it wasn't a traumatic thing like spew it as to something else that had happened and they even made it seem like it was a red flag all these things like i just i did not enjoy that reveal i don't know i just didn't really enjoy it that much especially after that reveal um i think the writers just didn't handle the reveal very well i don't really know how to talk about it without giving it away so i'm just gonna leave it at that <laughs> And also, they got together like in the last chapter and there was no epilogue and so it felt like a very unsatisfying 
read. Like, I was not satisfied at the end of it. Like, I wanted to see more of it um, and things like that. So, yeah, I enjoyed the story for what it was, but I think the writing towards the end of it was done very poorly. And so that's why I gave it three stars. Don't come for me. I love Macy. I love Elliot. There was not a character in this book that I couldn't stand, which is great. Other than a little, a, a little side character, little Miss Emma, I think was her name. I don't remember. Um, wasn't too fond of her. But like the people you don't like, you don't like see like much for yourself. So love in other words, finally read it. Didn't really care that much for it. I could have went my whole life not reading it and been fine. So do with that what you will. <laughs> so after that, I did read another Colleen Hoover book. I finally read Confess. Um, this is a fiction book with um, romance involved, of course, because it's Colleen Hoover. Um, <laughs> and so I don't really know how to how to like give you a synopsis of this book um because it's kind of like how do I do that I don't know <laughs> because all I can really say is that our that is dual POV um our main characters are Auburn and Owen loved them both um and this is basically just about Auburn um moving to Dallas for for a secret reason we don't find out till a little bit after but um yeah she moves to Dallas she meets Owen and yeah <laughs> that's about all I can tell you really um I don't even know yeah I don't even know they just got some confessions to do that's that's all I can say really um this book it was very like the concept was very cool I'll read the um, dedication to you. The confessions you read within this novel are true confessions submitted anonymously by readers. This book is dedicated to all of you who found the courage to share them. So we got some real life confessions in this book which made me panic. I was like people are crazy. I'm so scared to see what this is about. <laughs> um, but um, I think it was done really well. Um, they even have some, in the physical book, there is some, like, art that is in here as well, which I found very pretty. As you can see, loved it a lot. Um, but yeah, I don't really know how to tell you what is about this book without just spoiling everything. Um, so, yeah, just know it's dual POV, it's fiction with romance involved as well. Um, our main guy, Owen, he's an artist, and that's where the confessions come in. He gets anonymous confessions, and whatever speaks to him, he'll do a painting about that confession, which I thought was a very cool concept to not only have in a book, but to like have in art that like that's so freaking cool. I don't know why more people don't do that. <laughs> but yeah, that's all I can really say about the book. I gave this book four stars. I really did enjoy it. I read it in two days. It was very interesting to read. I liked the writing style of it. The story was great. Um, I gave it four, not five, because I just didn't really feel a connection with the characters, um, really at all. None of the characters really. The only one I really like felt connected to even a little bit was Auburn's roommate, which I forgot her name, so there's that. Um, but she's really the only one that I like really felt any connection towards. Um, so it really did just feel like I was reading a book instead of like immersing myself or feeling any like gut wrenching feelings for anything. This book, like when we find out like the secrets, the confessions and stuff of the main characters, it felt very much, it reminded me a lot of another book Colleen has. Um, and so this just felt like a, a practice run for the book that it reminded me of a lot, which I won't say because you could probably figure out the confessions in this if I did. Um, so yeah. Um, and I adore the other book that I was comparing this one to that it reminded me of. So I just, this one was more four stars. After that, I read my first Emily Henry book, which is Book Lovers. This is not enemies to lovers or anything. This is like rivals to lovers-esque. And so the, our main character, Nora, 
she reminded me so much of um, Sandra Bullock's character in The Proposal, Tate. So I kept, <laughs> I kept thinking about that movie. That like is such a comfort movie for me. So it made me automatically love this book because it was kind of similar in certain situations. There was no, there was no like fake dating or anything going on, which is kind of the premise of the movie, The Proposal. But the character Tate and Nora in this book were so similar. So Nora, our main character, she even talks about how she's considered like the obstacle in the way for the small town romance. She's the city girl, the um, stuck up, um, heartless girlfriend and all these things living in New York and she's just the obstacle for the guy that meets the small town girl that is sunshine and rainbows and blah 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 and <laughs> stuff like that and so she reminded me of Tate a lot because they do go to a small town for vacation and she was wearing heels like the whole time Tate did that in the movie <laughs> um she I think Tate was a liter literary agent or she was a book editor one of the two but Tate or er, Nora and Nora is a literary agent so yeah the, I'm just I'm wondering if Emily like if Nora was made because of Tate because she reminded me so much of Tate just her just everything and she Tate and Tate in the movie she loves her little like bike i don't know if it was a peloton yet because it was like 2008 but she loves her little like cycling bike thing and nora up in here she loves her little peloton i don't know i just really i really was into it um <laughs> so anyways making that small town um cliche romance book of like oh i'm a city girl i don't like um small towns it's not gonna change me yada yada um and then they go and then like it changes them and then they want to stay in a small town for the rest of their lives and marry a farmer or whatever like it takes that concept and turns it around and it's like no she is a city girl she's gonna be a city girl she's not gonna stay in a small town for some dude type of thing and so i really enjoyed that um our guy charlie um he's the same way they're like the sick they're like copy paste you know um <laughs> they're both like cynical and city city people all the things don't like small towns and i was here for it it's like it's grumpy and grumpy and i was here for it i loved it so much <laughs> and then also um if you guys are like an, the oldest sister or an older sister and you have a younger sister you're going to love this book because there's a lot of that representation happening. There, like, I feel like it was for the sisters' relationship more than these two's relationship, which you might really enjoy. Um, like, if you're a Frozen girl and you loved how the sister was the one that saved Elsa or Anna or whoever saved who, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't remember. If you loved that, you'll probably love this. Now, I like Tangled. <laughs> so... I would have liked it more if there was more of their romance as like these main plot and the sisters were the subplot. This book felt more like the sisters were the plot and the romance was the subplot, which to each their own. If you like that, go for it. But I wasn't really into that. I wanted more of Charlie and Nora. They were very cute. I loved them so much um it's just i don't know i really enjoyed that so much I gave it 4.5 stars because of that because i just wanted more of the romance i really did enjoy the sisters relationship and story but i feel like like the book just spent so much time on the sisters relationship compared to the romance which is completely fine i just I, i'm the only child okay so i didn't really care <laughs> to be honest with you um but yeah so then, after that, I did read this book for my summer class that I was taking at the time, um, but I'm still gonna, I'm still gonna freaking talk about it. But I still put it on Goodreads, like, I finished it. This is an autobiography, um, slash memoirs type of book, and it is Tuesdays with Maury, and it's Maury's memoirs, um, our author, Mitch Album, he is basically, um, getting memoirs of Maury, who was his old professor, after Maury gets diagnosed with ALS. 
Mitch and Maury decide to meet every Tuesday to just talk about life and lessons and things like that. Um, so yeah, it's a very short read. It was less than 200 pages, I think. Yeah, it was less than 200 pages. It was written very well. I really enjoyed it. I gave it, or I didn't give it any stars because it's real life and I don't feel comfortable <laughs> giving stars to like real life books <laughs> that are about people's lives. I did enjoy reading it. This book is basically how you would hope you would live out your days if you got diagnosed with some deadly um, disease. This is like the positive aspect of it. This is what you would hope you would act like and like take away from it and things like that. So I really did enjoy it. Um, not giving any stars since it's a real life thing. So yeah. So a different approach to ALS. <laughs> um, I read Every Note Played by Lisa Genova. So this one is about a pianist who gets diagnosed with ALS. Now I bought this book like a year ago so I didn't remember what exactly it was about. All I knew was that it was a pianist whose hands got paralyzed and I didn't know how or anything like that. And this month I was gonna actually read a different book but I felt like called to this book after I put down Tuesdays with Maury. I was like mm, I could read this one but I really want to read this one though. <laughs> um so yeah then i found out that this one was about als as well i didn't even read the synopsis i just started reading it because i thought i knew what it was about no no i read two books back to back about als <laughs> um so the end of this month was a very heavy month okay but oh my gosh so this one is a fiction book um it was written very well our author has a phd from harvard in neuroscience queen okay <laughs> so this one is in third person but also like dual pov where it's like we're gonna switch from her perspective but still have it be in third person and now we're gonna switch to his perspective and still gonna be in third person so it's like third person but it's so, <laughs> you know <laughs> anyways whatever um so like i said this is about a pianist who gets ALS and his ex-wife decides to um, let him move back in and she's going to take care of him and things like that. So I started thinking that this was like a second chance romance and I was like, we're not about that because I don't think I would be rooting for y'all to get back together, to be fair. Um, <laughs> so yeah, but it's not. So it's purely friction. There's no romance really at all in this book. Um, it was written very well. This is very much like the negative aspect of a ALS. Um, Tuesdays with Maury was definitely a lot more positive thinking and it wasn't as like descriptive of like what someone goes through with ALS. But this one, especially since the author has a PhD in neuroscience, this one was so like you really found out what it's like to live with ALS and so our characters are very, both very flawed <laughs> the ex-husband and the ex-wife they are both very flawed individuals um Richard more than anybody else who was the pianist um but it was very it was very sad <laughs> it was so it was so sad bro but I think it Lisa did a very good job with showing you what it's like to live with ALS um and just how gut-wrenching and heartbreaking this disease is and so I think she did a really good job with that I gave it 4.5 stars um I did really enjoy um the book and everything I just really wish that Richard the pianist who gets ALS I wish he had like one more chapter from his point of view even though it's in third person like I think like it was just missing something like I wanted like one more like like I don't know it was just I just I was missing something from it <laughs> but it ended in a beautiful way it was still a satisfying read I enjoyed it a lot um, and the author gave some links for um, learning more about ALS, for a website where you can donate, things like that. So I'm going to definitely leave those same links that she provides. I'm going to leave them down in the description below if you'd like to donate or learn more about ALS. That this read was very hard to 
see how people live with ALS because this she also did her homework okay just because she has a PhD in neuroscience she still was shadowing people that like deal with ALS she made friends with a lot of people with ALS like her acknowledgments and author's notes was so just <laughs> it was a lot but yeah I love how she gave those links as well so I will definitely leave those down below if you're interested in any of that but that was the book I ended the month with, um, we ended on a very depressing time, um, <laughs> but I did enjoy all of the books that I read for the most part, even Love and Other Words, um, but yeah. So that is all for this video. Let me know down in the comments what you guys read, if you've read any of these books that I just mentioned, your thoughts on them, and I will see you next time.